What's up everybody? It is Matt from Electric All Wheel and today we have the Amiet S8. This is a 48 volt e-bike with a nice big 48 volt battery on the down tube which does need some accompaniment. We will be adding another 52 volt 20 amp hour battery uh, as a tester but we recommend adding the same voltage and same amp hour class. We will be doing this with an electric all wheel dual battery discharge balance kit. This is the DX2 dual input, dual output kit. We will also show you briefly how you can hook up a second battery independently to each of the motors on the bike so that you can utilize that. We are at risk of a voltage limiter on the controller saying no to the 52 volt battery. So keep that in mind. But otherwise, the 48 volt battery in a bag will work just like this. And we have another 48 volt battery to test in case that fails. But we're hoping the 52 volt will be there so we can get the extra voltage and the capacity in combination with the DX2. Stick around to the end of the video where we will give you some range calculations utilizing the Micah Toll Constant. Keep in mind, this is not going to be very accurate with the dual motor bike, uh, given the internal resistance of the front motor and the extra weight, but it will give you a guideline for what you can expect with the extra battery. We will leave links to the recommended battery list as well as the electric all wheel dual battery discharge balance kit, especially the DX2 and then stick around to watch as we plug in independently and test to see that they work. We're gonna do this on the ground, so we will be holding up the uh, bike for test. So we'll get in a scenario, something along these lines and run, make sure that we can get both and then check that they are both hooked up. Uh, this is because the stand requires the the ropes to hold the bike up, so it's just not a convenient repair. We'll be sitting on the ground, 10 millimeter, I believe, is the nut size on the seat. Remove those six nuts, pull the seat, get into the controller. We've already mocked up the battery uh, utilizing the straps. It does offset just a little bit, but the straps can actually hold it in here, and then it fills this void space as well. We do have the e-bike battery straps that we've used on the battery here for the factory battery because it was a little wobbly. And we do suggest strapping in your second battery as well in the same manner, but we use the Velcro straps that were on the bag pre-existing first, and that is why it's hanging inside the bike. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary, and if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that Facebook group, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. Let's just get to it. All right, first thing I'm going to do is take out this mock-up setup for the battery. Just go ahead and undo all these zip ties. Not zip ties, the Velcro straps that are actually on the bag. And keep in mind, this size bag is the same size as the 48 volt triangle battery as well. And there you go. Now, I need to get all of the nuts off. There are six that attach this seat into the frame so we're going to have to go ahead and get those see if I can... and this is what we're after these nuts <laughs> Stop laughing. I'm not laughing. You're laughing. There's two. And then there are two more on the back side over here. Don't confuse them with the ones on the box.
There we are. Right, as I look in here, I see a master and a slave controller. Now your master is going to have um, your connection for throttle and then it will control the slave. Uh, it looks like this is your master. So what we know is that the main line coming in is right here. And then we will detach and here is your main connector. So for this install, we're going to be using two sets of the 12 AWG wires with the XT90 to XT60 adapters. The DX2 kit does come with 14 AWG cables, but we are going to be utilizing this thicker gauge cable along with the ad adapters of the two DX2 or the two 12 AWG extension cables. Now I'm going to take and plug in to the DX2. So just plug in what works, one cable per source. There we are. And now keep in mind you have in, in, out, out. An in is a battery, out is a controller. So my middle two will be my controller. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a hold of them. So now I'm going to take my two uh, male-female XT60 adapters and plug them into the controller ports for each. So one will go here. And then remember that this is the Y off of the main. So the primary connector for this controller is this one. So we're going to take that and plug it in here. Now I'm going to take my female XT90, which is this end, to male XT60, and it's the nomenclature is reversed if you orient by the pins, which is male XT90 and female pin. And I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. This is the main battery cable coming up into the controller housing. There we go. Now that I have, I know that the middle two are out to the controller, that's these. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug them in. And you might consider putting a little tape on these so they can't come loose when you're doing your install. Now I have my main battery coming into the system. So I'm just going to leave that there and then I'm not going to plug in the second. Drop that, make sure that that doesn't get bound up, turn the bike on, it is on, has one, so that's dual motor right there in B setting on the motor selection so we know that the connection is good and the balancer the balancer is working. Now that I've tested off my main battery cable, I'm just going to unplug that real quick. I still have my two center lines which are out to my controller. And what I'm going to do now is plug in one of these into my aftermarket battery. So I'm just going to plug that in. Main battery is here, disconnected. Second battery is here. Pass one. There we are. Both wheels. And that's from the second battery only. The disconnected main battery is here. Now that we've tested that all of it works, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my factory battery and then reintroduce my controllers 
and the cabling into the housing. But first, I need to go ahead and make sure and tidy this up. So I am going to give it a wrap with some electrical tape. And then, like I said, you should consider making sure that all your connections are tight and fixed by putting some electrical tape around each of the connectors as well. At this point, I know my connection is good. So what I'm after is making sure that I can feed all of these into the controller housing down at the bottom. So I'm going to take loose the second battery connector or cable, and then I'm just going to run it through this controller housing and get a hold of it under the frame. Once I do that, I'm going to begin packing my cabling. There we are, and there is spacing under this seat, so you're not you're not really cramping anything. There's plenty of room there. So now I have my connection here, and here is my cable. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in, and you might consider taping right here. So you want to get your nose of the battery inside the frame before you do so. And for this install, I'm going to bring the straps to this side of the bike just because that's the way they naturally flow on the battery itself or the battery casing. Okay. We are now in there. That's not coming out. It's clear the suspension. Everything looks good. We'll go ahead and tighten down where we can. And voila. Well, there you have it. We have successfully installed a second 52 volt, 20 amp hour battery in line with, in combination with a DX2 for this Amiet SA e-bike. We are very excited about that. I know a lot of you stuck around for the range calculations, which are going to be rough some because of the dual battery nature of this and the overage and cutoff voltage limit. But we're going to give you a roundabout idea on how far this bike can go, you can go utilized conservatively. So the first battery is 48 volt times 25 and you get 1200 watt hours. The second battery is 52 times 20 and you get 1040 plus 1200 equals 2240 and we're going to divide that by 25 and 25 is the mica toll constant which says it's 25 watt hours per mile ridden at 20 miles an hour throttle only and you get 89.6 miles. Now again, I must stress that with the usage of the front motor or even with it off at high speed, you're going to have a lot of rolling resistance or you're going to be pulling 46 amp off of this dual 23 amp controller. So keep that in mind. I would expect somewhere in the nature of 50 to 60 at low speeds. If you're running high speed pass, you're not going any more than 30 to 40 on this dual motor 1000 watt setup. Dual motor, dual 1000 watt setup. But we do appreciate having the extra capacity and then bumping it up in that voltage range. Uh, you are on your own and at risk if you use the 52 volt battery. Uh, it is recommended that you utilize 48 volts to match the system specs we put in this 52 in the hopes that the controller is capable of handling it in combination with the DX2. And then it will be efficient, efficiently balance these batteries on discharge for this bike through the dual battery dual discharge balancer of the dx2 we are very excited about that we will leave links to the products in the description below we appreciate you utilizing those links to help keep this channel going especially with the amiet s8 we will leave a link and discount in the description below as well 
If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary, and if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get on that Facebook group, make an event, go for a ride with your friends. We'll talk to you next time.